verses 26 through 38. Luke writes, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends our reading for this morning. Emily is in tears. At 27 years old, she felt as if her life was over. After five years in an abusive marriage, she had had enough. Somehow she got up enough courage to take her two young children, pack a few things in a few suitcases, hop on a bus, and travel 500 miles away to another city to start a new life. But starting a new life isn't easy. She can't find a job. Friends who said they would help her turn their back on her. Her money runs out. Her children are sick and miserable. She has no home, no food, no friends. No hope. As she wanders aimlessly down the sidewalk, she passes by a church. And on the sign out in front of the church are the words, God is faithful and able. It's been a long, long time since Emily stepped foot in a church. And she suddenly remembers why. Faith is a myth. It's a bunch of empty promises. God hasn't been faithful to me, she mutters to herself. Ever been there? Ever felt hopeless? Ever find yourself trapped in a seemingly impossible situation? If you have, then perhaps you know how hard it is to trust God. To trust in God's promise. And yet the witnesses of the people through the ages who are people of God make a bold claim that God's love is steadfast and God's promises are sure. David found that to be true. David was a shepherd, the youngest of eight boys, which meant... He was on the bottom of the family pecking order. 
And he was at the bottom of the social order too. And yet, God chose David to be king of Israel. And a descendant of his would be king forever over Israel. What an amazing promise. And God's faithfulness is even more extraordinary when we learn the story is such that David did pretty good as king at first. He was very successful. He brought peace and prosperity to the nation of Israel like they had never seen before. But with many leaders, success went to his head. And he started making some very bad moral and ethical decisions. One day he has an affair with another man's wife and gets her pregnant. But instead of coming clean, David tries to cover it up. And that doesn't work. He has the other man, her husband, murdered. Oh no. This was the one chosen by God. This was the one through whom God would establish His kingdom forever. This was the one through whom His gene pool, which now seems to be a cesspool, would produce the king of all kings. Surely David's actions would negate God's promise, right? No. God's love is steadfast. And God's promises are sure. Have you ever been burned by someone's broken promise? If you're alive and breathing, then you've experienced the pain of a broken promise in one way or another. You went all in on a business deal only to find out you've been swindled. You promised the love of your life, death, till death do us part, and then you're abandoned. You promised a promotion or raise at work only to find out you've been fired. Promises, 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 broken, broken, broken. For some people, every time we experience the pain of a broken relationship, we find it even more difficult to trust, especially God. That's why it's so important we consider the witness of God's people through the ages who proclaim to us God's promises are sure. God's love is steadfast. Mary found that to be true. Here's a young woman who finds herself in an impossible situation. Imagine being a girl, say 14, 15, living in a small town like Myerstown, when suddenly an angel appears. And that would be strange enough, but then this angel makes this outrageous promise to you, saying, God is with you. You are favored by the Lord. Even though you are a virgin, you will conceive a child, and not just any child. This child will be called Jesus, the Son of God. Can you imagine? What are your parents going to say? What would the neighbors think? What would your fiancé Joseph say? How can any of this be possible? But then the angel reassures her, saying, for nothing will be impossible with God. What would you do? How would you respond? Based on all the broken promises in your life, what would you do? Mary responds, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And God delivers. God makes good on God's promises. Mary gives birth to Jesus, the Son of God. And by doing so, God made good on God's promises to David so many years ago. Jesus 
is from David's gene pool. Jesus is King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He's the ruler over Israel. He's the ruler over all creation. One day Jesus will rule in every human heart. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. One day, everyone will see that because of Jesus, God's love is steadfast and His promises are sure. Perhaps you feel like you're in an impossible situation right now. Struggling to believe that tomorrow can be better than today. The joy of Christmas is all around, but that joy escapes you right now. If that's you, then I want to proclaim to you what the witnesses have proclaimed through the ages. God's love is steadfast. God's promises are sure. God will not abandon you. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus next week, we celebrate the one who is faithful. The one whose love is steadfast and sure. The one who is already at work in our lives in ways that we can't even comprehend. The one who will never ever let us go. God has made an everlasting promise to each one of us. Emily continues her aimless walk down that sidewalk on that rainy, wet, dreary day. And then a hand touches her on the shoulder and she turns around and there is this older woman about her mother's age wearing one of those bright yellow raincoats. The woman says to her, Are you okay, sweetheart? It's a terrible day to be out walking. Why not have some hot soup and fresh bread with us in the church? You're more than welcome. Bring your children. Come on in. At any other time, Emily would have just kept walking down that street. Maybe it was the hunger in her stomach and the thought of food. Maybe it was the thought of getting in from out of that rainy, dreary day inside where it's warm and dry. Truth is, there is something in that woman's eyes, something in her voice that connects with Emily. There's a genuineness in her eyes. There's a concern in her voice that Emily hadn't felt or experienced in a long, long time. She finds herself sitting at a table slurping hot soup and fresh bread as her children are safe and dry, being loved and fed by a half a dozen surrogate grandmothers. In the church, Emily pours out her fears and frustrations to a sympathetic ear as her children are sleeping in the nursery. She talks about the abuse of her past. She talks about her failure to be able to start life anew. She talks about her hopelessness about her future. Emily is in tears. The woman who met her on her street takes both of Emily's hands and says, Honey, you're not alone. God is faithful and able. Together, we will see you through this. Emily is hopeful. For the very first time in a long, long time, for her, in the church, on that day, by God's grace, Emily started living 
a new life. Amen. Let us pray.